Hello and welcome to the second round of the fourth season of the American Touring Car Championship, as presented by Touring Pro Series and supported by Race Department. It's Watkins Glen, which is our venue for this round, the second round, as I'm saying. Two races here today, two sprint races, and joining me in the booth today is Toby Davis, what will surely be a very exciting race. Hello and welcome, and uh, thank you, Mr. Callan, and uh, we're all looking forward to this one. We uh, had an exciting time out last time at Road America and we saw uh, plenty of incidents and they've all been uh, dealt with in the uh, professional way that is the Touring Pro Series in association with racedepartment.com and uh, we're all very excited we're broadcasting uh, in several places we've tried to spread the word and you can catch us on Race Department and on our website www.touringproseries.com forward slash broadcast and of course also the multi BC website as well and uh, they are our broadcast partner and you can see in the uh, top corners of the uh, of the broadcast we are also using SimSync to uh, to sim to uh, sync up um, everyone's uh, everyone's mods and everyone's tracks so that uh, so that everyone is all in the same stage of uh, of sync and so that uh, there are no disconnection issues and uh, as we look at current leader Miguel Nato, who's looking very strong here, his uh, his pace has been strong in the first round, and uh, he's one of our tips for the win, isn't he, Brian? He's my tip for this race will win, definitely. He's definitely the fastest driver I've seen so far. I'm impressed with his pace. And um, Toby is uh, fresh off his win in the World Touring Masters round six at Lusitana. Yes, and, uh, it's a completely different kettle of fish this time out. We've got two sprint races if you like rather than the uh, no, one hour one hour I'll just, I'll just highlight in your, your race win Toby and how, how it's a privilege to have an analyst such as you who winning races still rather than no. just somebody who pretends to be an analyst <laughs> well I, I try my best it's, uh, as I say it's a completely different kettle of fish these are um, tour, these are touring cars of the modern era rather than uh, with the uh, World Touring Masters it's obviously uh, touring cars from the Group B era in the 1980s late 1980s and Group A era terrible Group A sorry my <laughs> In the late 80s and early 90s, this is uh, modern day S2000 racing and uh, Miguel Nato in the Chevrolet and he is, uh, he is currently topping our time sheets. Andre Cairo, his compatriot, uh, behind him in second position with uh, Francisco Villa in third and Gonçalves in fourth. So four Portuguese drivers in the top four positions, Ryan. Mm, and we've got another one who's got a purple sector as well, Pedro Amaral and Vincent Kahn as well. Vincent Kahn's a dark horse for this race. Well, not really a dark horse, I guess. He's a season two champion. He's not seen it shown any of that form in a couple of seasons really but the S60 is so very very good here because because of its straight line speed and of course it's a very very fast circuit this one Watkins Glen isn't it very fast it's one of the fastest in the tracks obviously we've got KW Speedway coming up which will be uh, pretty much flat out all the way around I'm not exactly sure whether it's flat out all the right way, way around you'll have to tell me that uh, Mr. it's Mr. a wee bit of lift off here and there well there we go and uh, NATO's coming through he's been very quick this lap and Vincent Kahn's gone purple as well this is uh, just practice at the Vincent moment. Kahn look at that Vincent Kahn and Miguel NATO 52 yeah. ones both both of them doing well Vincent Kahn on a PB at the moment this driver Amaral, Amaral. and uh, Keith Barrick as well on a PB as well and Amaral was in was unceremoniously taken out of uh, one of the races at Road America by his own teammate Miguel NATO got a very uh, very big slide on that this Watkins Glen track has seen only one pole sitter in both of the times we've visited here in the past, in ATC Season 1 and Season 3. We missed it out in Season 2. And that's Reese Gardner. has had pole position both times we've been here, but unfortunately he's not as quick this time around as he has been in the past. In fact, you can see he's way down the field, 21st at the moment. At the time at the moment, he was about 15th, if I remember correctly. And... It's uh, Hugo Barbosa, we just missed there, so he just set a time, so I'd have to go back through the field to get to him. Hugo Barbosa has uh, come up to server one, from server two. And this with Tolbog is also struggling, though, isn't he, for pace in this Honda, because Honda is not the best in straight line, is it? No, but uh, it's it's a very good all-round car, and mm. um, Tolbog is a very quick driver, so he should be able to put it up somewhere near the front of the field. If he, get, if he can get in the slipstream, um, of course, then uh, then there's, there should be no reason why he can't do very well here. One of the bad boys from race one, Andre Gallardo, he wasn't a very fast lap until that particular point, and he's one of the big threats here today. Hotly tipped, the crew seems like the, the car to beat, along with, of course, the S60. 
One minute to go until qualifying here. Remember, it's Super Bowl qualifying, 10 minutes, and then go from there to a five minute warm up, and then from there to the two races that we have. Both of them with forced pit stops. Cajado wringing its car, that car's neck through the final corner. Doesn't improve his time, 52.514. VR is on a PB at the moment. He's second in the championship after getting another race two win. He specializes in those, doesn't he, Toby? And, uh, he had four of those last year, last season. I know, I've seen your predictions, and it looks like you're predicting him for a race two win. And uh, he's in the BMW, of course, so he should be able to get uh, a better start than uh, some of the others. Yes, he's has a, he's has a very welcome habit of winning those race two efforts. And, in fact, he's one of the very best drivers in the TPS history in terms of um, win ratio. That's yes. eight wins from 21 races. He's, he's one of those drivers that's got more wins than me, and therefore I'm jealous. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, he's a very good driver, and he always picks the BMW. Uh, seems to get along very well with that car. And, Remember, uh, you can, you can uh, you check those stats out at touringportseries.com in the Hall of Fame page, on the front page. And Toby is in there, as he was saying. Toby with a 13% win, uh, win success rate. Well, so that makes sound rubbish. <laughs> it's better than mine. Mine's only 5%. <laughs> it's a little bit better than mine. I Drive don't like line. statistics anymore. Can we not talk about 50, it? 52.325. He improves, but doesn't improve his position. I like talking about statistics because I'm sure VL likes me talking about statistics because he has a 38.1% win Ow. success rate. But it's better than 1 in 3. And, uh, yes. That's, 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 that's very fantastic. impressive. Indeed, actually, in fact, it? it's the best in the TPS apart from Mr. Michael Schreiner, who only um, has done two races, and he co-drove with Florian Strauss. So that doesn't count. That's that, doesn't, that doesn't count. <laughs> Although Reese Norton Boom had, um, has, has two wins from four races. But of course, it's not very many races, whereas VR's done 21, so it's a little bit more impressive, I would say. Yes, but Torborg himself, of course, is the most winning driver in TPS history. And he's leading this championship as well after his round one win and a third place in the second race at Road America. And we're all about to go to qualifying now. A little bit late it seems actually. Thought they'd gone by now. Probably Keith doing a, a, another couple of laps sneakily. Oh no, Probably. He's in, he's no, back he's in the pits look. Lane, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll let him off. Kane Lasky, Kane Lasky is back. out the track. Oh someone's someone's rolling it down into the circuit. Who's that? Like hazy. I think so, the yellow and green machine. Is it Elio or, or Alessio? That's the problem. They're both in here. It's Elio. Elio. There you go. There's Elio. There's Paul Wood. And it's here's Alessio. You see, see the similarity look? That's going to be a bit of a nightmare for me. Uh, it's, a, it's a blue one. Not it's, a I'm just going to say Lacay's now. Get away with it each time, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not at the dead front of the field, so uh, it's um, there's a there's a chance that we'll be uh, watching the front of the field. It's always been. Uh, a battle at the front of the field that we tend to uh, focus on, of course, naturally. And, well, a bit uh, of a, a bit of controversy after the uh, the first round, didn't we, Toby, with the incident reports? Yes, I was saying they've all been uh, they've all been dealt with in the usual professional way mm -hmm. that is with the Touring Pro Series, but uh, there were a lot of reports um, and mm -hmm. a lot of incidents going on, and uh, a few drivers have uh, have left the series for one reason or another. Uh, yeah, just, uh, just just the one driver has left. Oh, there are two, two drivers have left, haven't they? Not necessarily because of those those incidents. No, but uh, Larson... Oh, I was, I was going to show everybody. Oh, that's better. I can see it from this side better. He's obviously sharing a pit lane with pit box with somebody. Sorry to interrupt, Toby. But this is um, the winning skin from the livery contest that just ended today. So congratulations to Corey Slade for his winning effort. He's driving the car and he designed it in his XSG cruise. So congratulations to him. That's a worthy winner also as well. We are now into qualifying though, Toby. Who'd you tip the pole? <laughs> I'm going to stick my neck out and say NATO. <laughs> <laughs> no, Although we're Carl not serious. Was very, very close, is... wasn't he? Carl was less than half he a was, half he was, off. He was close, but honestly, I don't think anyone will, will get uh, in front of NATO. Talborg okay. obviously is our, is our Super Bowl king. We've seen that in the WTM as well as in the ATCC and the AGTC. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he always tends to pull something out, but uh, I don't think he'll be able to today in the Honda. I think we'll see a Chevrolet on pole, and I think we'll see NATO's Chevrolet on pole. What do you think of this man? Is he got a chance? Kind of quick, but I don't think he's I don't think he's quite got the pace of NATO. But we'll we'll see. It's one of those really where you uh, you say one thing and something completely different happens. You can see Reese Garner on pole position once again. 
here comes Kaido out of the pit. Seems like he's the first of the front runners to make a move. Oh, Ma Amaral's already out on the track. Wow, he's way around the track. He went instantly out of the track, didn't he? See, obviously, we get a nice early, nice early banker in. See, I, 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 when I'm racing, I do super pole. I always get a little bit distracted by the, the times popping up on the top right-hand side. And sometimes I just like to go out early, just to get rid of that distraction. I, I don't know how you feel about that. I don't. I like to. I like to get it out early. I like to put a banker lap in because it means I can. I, I can push. You can't put a banker lap in the super pole qualifying, Toby. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> what am I on about? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, in super pole, I, I like to wait towards the end of the session. I like to uh, figure out exactly what my opposition are doing. So uh, it's usually you, about five minutes in. Obviously, I normally do better with a target. Uh, yes, I normally do better. I, I, well, I'd rather chase than be chased. You've, uh, you've seen me bottle under pressure, but uh, stop talking about me. But the point is... Um, <laughs> oh, well, the point I wouldn't say that at all. You're, you do very well under pressure. Right? Look at Lusitana. Last yeah, time out, those viewers, I'm sure they would agree. Anyway, back yeah, to the action. Amaral about to begin his lap, and uh, he's going to be our pacer to earlier on, uh, early on in the session. He is. And this will be a good occasion because he's got some speed, hasn't he? He has got some speed. He's not, he's not quite got as much speed as, say, the Miguel Matos of mm -hmm. this world, pushing very hard over the, uh, all the, curb. the curbs. And that uh, is allowed in the uh, Twin Pro Series. Uh, we, Absolutely. Uh, we make some exceptions to the uh, normal RD rule of two wheels within the white lines uh, when there's available curbing or uh, a sensible runoff area. Uh, for example, Rattlesnake Point. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, it just makes logical sense. And Amaral, uh, using all of the track and all of the curb there, and uh, Demonstrating that very, very well indeed. He's going to come into this right-hander now. You've sort of got to throw it in early, there. haven't you? Look at the speed you take in. Oh, he's taking too much speed in, perhaps. You just you can see exactly where the camber is. Use all that dark area, dark tarmac, which is obviously been put in because the cars go over that so much that it just wears away at it. And now Amaral comes up to the latter end of the circuit. Pitches it in. This corner here is extremely easy to get wrong. So just washes away on the exit and you go uphill. So it's a very strange feeling when you get it right actually because you just throw it, throw it into the corner. Now you go up the hill and you're going to plunge down. Down into this hairpin here. Try and clip that apex right there. Try not to hit the curb too hard though because it unsettles your car. Get the power on now. Down up the hill. Down towards this corner here. You can go for an early turn in or you can go for a late turn in. Amaral favours the middle turn in. <laughs> Comes out of the corner. Down towards now. Now this is where it requires trust and commitment because there's no banking when you go into it. Then there is suddenly there. Oh, it takes you in. Just goes flat out into there as much as you can in these cars. Now down towards the final corner. And don't do that. Get it very, very sideways. Don't do that. Try and keep the, the, the momentum up. And that will have hurt Amaral's lap time quite a lot. 52.614. It's a solid lap time. But Kayado already, as we've seen, he has the pace. He's two tenths up after sector two. We saw 52 ones in uh, in practice, and uh, Amaral with a 52 six, about five tenths off. Oh, we've got some here there, Kaido. I know he's pushing very hard indeed. He was on the throttle there with the front wheel drive cars. You can get away with that a little bit, and you can get away with being sideways a lot easier than say the BMW. Kaido coming through the final corner now. Let's see if he can do what he he uh, does better than what Amaral did. He comes through across Just the about. line now, and he's going to cross it here. 52 two five zero. So. Miguel Nato's, Miguel Nato's pur purple. He is indeed. Miguel Nato is purple. I'm pretty sure he's, he's Portuguese, but he's purple also. <laughs> Comes through the uh, the boot section of the track. Does. Or towards the boot section of the track. Look at this corner here. I'll show you exactly what I was talking about earlier. It's a very strange feeling getting this corner right. It goes all the way up the hill. And it's very, very easy to run wide onto that grass as well. Because there's no runoff at all. Not even a slight hint of a curve. No, and it's a very strange uh, banking as well. The uh, the black tarmac, the darker tarmac, showing the split. The, the split. Oh, Talbot goes on pole. Talbot goes on pole. Fifty-two point two zero five. But Nato is still purple on that. Is he purple on Talbot or purple on Talbot? Yeah, purple on Talbot because he's, uh, he's two tenths up. So uh, he comes towards the final part of the lap. This is turn uh, turn ten now, and there's uh, just two more turns left. And the, uh, the car wiggling around as he tries to hold on to it and throws it into the final corner and then oh that's a beautiful line that's a beautiful line there from Miguel Nato it's going to go hard. across the line now and it's going to be 51.8 from Miguel Nato that is a superb lap time there from the Portuguese asserting his authority here at this track
And who else is out on track that can challenge that? Keith Barrick's out on track. Francisco Villa's out on track as well. Keith Barrick is out on track. Just two tenths down in the second sector. If he does that, he will stop to second place. Oh, pushing very hard there. Way wide of the optimal line, it seems. Throws it in nicely, though. It does. Not out of shape like NATO as well. Rhys Garner's sixth. So he continues his pretty fast qualifying pace at this track, which is quite phenomenal, really. Just need to turn it on here. Let's see what Barry can do as he comes across the line. 51 to B. 52 So he's front row. But he's ahead of his, his friend and teammates and rival, Jesper Torborg. Which will be very pleased with indeed. That will please him immensely. That's quite an impressive lap from him. Must be. There's Kane Lasky out on track at the moment. Oh, pushing very hard into the final corner. VR's out on track. As is Khan. Let's watch VR because VR is out on track first. Sorry, press the right button. VR's out on track first. In the BMW, which has been struggling ever so slightly at this track. For absolute out and out pace. Look at the commitment into that corner, Toby. I could watch them go to that corner all day long. He was uh, a lot more committed through there than. Uh than Kayado was and uh, managed to keep it gathered up and keep it sorted on the exit of the corner as well. Look at that, clipping the apex perfectly for Bia. He looks like he's on fire and he is our championship leader as well. So he's got a lot to... He's second in the championship. Second, second in the championship. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he's, uh, he's got, got a point to prove though. And uh, he needs to show that he is able to run at the front all the time. Look at that, right up the edge of the, uh, edge of the grass. Look at the wheel work. Wheels squirming around as he tries to get those front wheels to bite and turn in get around the corner the most most efficiently as possible and just corrects it's like that next got a little tiny correction as he anticipates the oversteer from the back end of the car it's been interesting to take the split now he misses that to split, split, oh, split unfortunately we? I think we weren't paying attention I'm sure oh. the viewers were they know more than we do so it's even more exciting <laughs> for us here we go throws it in throws it. Look beautiful at the, look at throw it in oh it's beautiful uses all the always without shape there because you have to get back across track very quickly he did it okay though Box of Wondersteer right there it seems. And across the line. 52-1-0. Second. Second. Bumps Keith Barrick down to the second row. So it's Barrick and Torborg in the second row. So we've got Team Portugal 1-2. And then FDR Canden 3-4. And, and they'll be very uh, very happy with that. We saw four Portuguese Khan drivers sixth. early on. Vincent Khan, Vincent Khan goes sixth. sixth. So strong performance there for Vincent Khan. He's right in the mix. I mean, he's only got 52-3, which is a phenomenal lap time, but he's way down the grid in sixth. After NATO, it's very, very tight between second and sixth place. Just uh, just two tens in it. Lasky goes 11th. Lasky puts in a solid effort, effort and goes into 11th. Who else is out on track? Oh, Braham. A terrible lap. 53.2. 16th position. I would not be pleased with that at all. Damn you, Braham. You're in my, one of my predictions. <laughs> <laughs> Ruining it already. He's, pr he's probably in one of mine as well. I, uh, and Eric Nelson is still on track. And Corey Slade. So this Eric Nelson, Corey Slade left. And Corey Slade's going to get lap time in. He's not. We've got a minute left to go to complete a flying lap. It's not going to happen. And Nelson, 53.112. Solid 15th place for Eric. Our karate kid in the field. Here is Corey Slade in that beautiful livery, which is not going to get a lap time in. He's going to have to start from the back of the field. Oh dear me, if we just hold under that in the race as well, backs into the barriers. So congratulations to Miguel Nato. Not a surprise, but he still needed to go out there and get the job done, didn't he? He did, but I'm glad I stuck my neck out. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, bit it was a, a daring, bit of a lucky was a guess, lad. <laughs> was a daring but yeah, well done, Nato. Nato put in an excellent lap, first first lap time we've seen under 52 mm -hmm. under 52 so uh, he takes pole position from Francisco Villa and uh, as you're saying uh, teammates followed by teammates so uh, mm -hmm. interesting to see whether there's any tactics going on we've got um, Team Portugal 2 5th and 8th so Team Portugal that's Caiado and Moral and then Vincent Kahn Hugo and Salves they're in 6th and 7th going through the field for you here Reese Kahn ended up 9th after, after that but that's still quicker than the pace he was showing in pre-practice, in absolute race pace. So something happens to Reese Gardner at this track during qualifying, and he just finds that extra bit of speed. Reminds me of Greg Murphy at Bathurst, really. So certain places bring out certain attributes in certain drivers. And we're now in warm-up, and we'll give you the full rundown of the grid as we are.
We have Miguel Nato with Francesco Villa, Keith Barrick, Jesper Torborg, Andre Callado, Vincent Kahn, Hugo Gonzalez, Pedro Amaral, Luis Gardner, and Duarte Lopez. Duarte Lopez is the first of the drivers to uh, first of the drivers who have come up from server two to uh, first of the drivers. <laughs> I can't take the sentence out, Craig. First of the drivers who were in server two and are now in server one. Yes. There you go. Qualifying. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> it was a stupid long sentence. It didn't need, didn't need to be that long. Anyway, eleventh place, Kane Lasky. Apparently, he's from Italy, but he's not. He's actually from the USA. Domingos Vath is in twelfth. He also came up from Serb 2. 13th place, Matthias Klein. 24th is Reggie Blaine. Reggie missed out on Server 1, unusually, actually. One of the big casualties um, in the pre-qualifying, but he got himself back into Server 1 immediately after, of course, the first round. Eric Nelson there in 15th. 16th, Alessio Lucchese. 17th, Yuri Braham. He'll not be happy with that at all. 17th. 18th place, Robert Isles. 19th place, Gary Lennon. 20th, Paul Wood. The two Australian guys there both come up from server 2 as well and another big casualty was Darius Widerski he was not in server 1 after, in, in the first race and now he is here today 22nd Hugo Barbosa 23rd Elio Lucchese and rounding out the, the field was Corey Slade in 24th position he 25th on the grid because he didn't even set a lap time unfortunately 3 minutes to go to the race here Toby how do you see this going? It all depends on the getaway that the guys have up front. Um, obviously, Via and NATO will be will have a strategy in their heads of how to keep uh, Barrick and Talbot behind them, mm -hmm. and uh, it's whether they employ that to good effect will be in the early stages will be uh, will be the uh, the big thing. NATO um, had a little bit of problems with tyre wear. We were we were hearing from Keith Barrick earlier on. Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not that will manifest itself in the races, and uh, whether it was just Keith getting paranoid or not I don't know. <laughs> but the cruise has a, a tendency to, re to wear its rear tyres the same speed as its front tyres which sounds great because you keep your balance throughout the stint however once you put fr new fronts on on the car which is the fastest thing to do in the pit stop because you have to change two tyres you then have much more worn rear, t rear tyres than in other cars and that is the problem you end up with a very oversteery Chevrolet this will be the problem that Nickel NATO will be facing but uh, um, when you're s s put yourself in, in Barrick and Torborg's shoes, and you've got two people ahead of you who are teammates, who are very good friends, who are very fast, I mean, is that is, do you fear that sort of thing, especially when they're teammates and they, they can work together to shut you out? Um, what as as another driver, you mean? Yes, yeah. Imagine you were Barrick or Torborg, and you had yes. NATO and, and VR ahead of you, who are you know obviously teammates, good friends, very fast, and they would be able to work together to uh, nullify you. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's whenever. But the thing is, though, whenever you get straight into racing, you sort of forget who your teammate is. Sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, me and me and Chris Butcher used to try and make it work in uh, in the World Touring Masters, and then end up ended up squab squabbling anyway. <laughs> and uh, quite fr quite frankly, sometimes it just goes out of the window. I mean, you don't really fear two drivers if they're in the same team, unless they're obviously uh, driving side by side into every corner and uh, making it impossible to overtake. But of course. There is the pit stops, and uh, there is uh, other ways of overtaking um, mm -hmm. through the pit stops. So I don't think you'd be too worried if you're Keith or uh, or Jesper in that situation. And uh, quite frankly, uh, just this one race will not make the championship. There's another race later on in the at uh, the same track uh, just immediately after this one. So they'll they'll be looking for the best result they can get, but uh, they won't be too worried that they've got uh, two drivers in front of them. I think they'll be uh, happy to be third and fourth, quite frankly, especially if you're uh, you're uh, in the Honda. Yeah, absolutely, which has not got the ultimate one lap speed, so it's a very good um, result indeed for those guys. You can see the people pitting now, observing the pit lane uh, requirements. It was very fast in there, I hope he didn't do that in the race, because he's definitely going to be speeding. Yeah, it was definitely uh, definitely speeding that time. See how much he gained he on the, the cars in front. Talk about Swiderski, he missed out in, um, in to get into, into the server one from the pre-qualifying at most sports, so he missed out at Road America, but he got a first and a third in Server 2, and was probably easily the quickest driver there. But he's qualified very poorly here, I mean, it's a bit of a mystery, this driver at the moment. Seems to blow hot and cold. 
Yeah, sometimes he goes, I mean, he might just hate motorsports. Uh, it's, it could just be that simple, and mm -hmm. there are certain tracks that uh, certainly I don't like, and uh, of course every driver will have their favourite and least favourite track. It could be as simple as that, and it uh, could just be he didn't connect with a car. It's obviously a, a brand new set of cars uh, for this time round in the ATCC, um, using the uh, the updated race packs, and uh, Spaderski perhaps just didn't connect quite quite with his car at that point in time, and uh, obviously. Uh, didn't quite put in a good showing in qualifying, uh, but the standard of driving in Server 1 is exceptional. And, it is, absolutely. Uh, and uh, he's, not going to, uh, he's not going to be straight towards the front of the field, uh, if we're honest. He's a very good driver, but he's not. Uh, there's a, a lot of quality drivers in the top, in, even in the top 10, you know. Absolutely. I think, and of course, uh, he, has, he has won a race in the ATCC in the past. In fact, it was back at Road America last year where he won a race. It's been a, uh, a long time between drinks for an, 80, for an ATCC win, although he did take a win at Rattlesnake Point. If you remember, Toby, you were commentating with me, and he uh, somehow went into the pit in eighth place, and when, once everyone came out and did their pits, he was in first. Yeah, it made absolutely no sense at the time, and I still don't <laughs> understand that one. I, neither do I. I will remember that till my dying day, I'm, I'm pretty sure. That was, the, uh, that, was the, that was the wet race, wasn't it? It was indeed the wet race, yes. Yeah, I wonder, I'd wonder if he chose the right tyres or something. It was uh, just the right tyres at the right, right point. But even when... The, when Everything was even dealt, and it went back to being a bit dry, and everything was the same for everybody. He was still uh, plenty quick enough to hold off VR for the win. So uh, definitely has the pace on his day. One of the today does not seem to be one of his days. <laughs> he's down in what, what's he in? He's in about 14th place or something. So he's actually way back at the back of the field, about 22nd. Oh, is he? 21st. 21st. Ouch. Well, so he has a, he's a lot of lot of work to do from there. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll see the we'll see the leaders. Uh, nose to tail for quite some laps, I think, and uh, whether Swiderski will be able to do anything from 20 seconds is another story. They're all lining up on the grid now. Yeah, we've got a formation lap over here, so not to get too excited just yet. And we'll watch this field, which is a magnificent looking field. Some great skins out there, some very colourful skins, isn't there, Toby? Some of the uh, some of the best skins actually I've ever seen in this particular series. I, I do like the Portuguese entries. They're uh, they're all sort of colour coded and it all makes sense. I like it when, uh, when things make sense, and <laughs> nice, and ob nice and obvious, I can understand them then. I'm just waiting for NATO, get oh, NATO is now on, on the grid, who are we waiting to get on the grid? Oh, here we go. And they're just about set off on their formation lap. And where the grid, from the grid they go. So they'll do one lap, and then they'll come to the start line, and, uh, and we'll go green from there. Indeed. And uh, we'll be looking to see who can get the best getaway. I think uh, always you see uh, you see the BMWs getting a good getaway, whether it's a rolling start or a standing start. They've got the rear-wheel drive and they've got the traction. Yeah. Uh, even from even from low speed, it's an advantage. Yep. Well, and it was uh, NATO who took the win here last year alongside yep. Mr. VR. So with history of the itself. with those two at the front of the grid. <laughs> yes. Is ominous. NATO took race one, VR took race two. Very, very close battle between VR and the rest of the drivers in race two. No to tell. It's a very much a drafting track, this one. You can slipstream each other, and once you lose the slipstream, it's very difficult to get back into that battle. So it's vital to keep in the slipstream. As you can see, this long, long, flat out section, all the way from the first corner, you're flat out all the way down to this, this next corner down here, which is not exactly slow either. Plenty so, of time to draft, but it's not really an overtaking spot, is it? It's not, it's a not an overtaking spot either, that's the thing. Not, well, it's not a traditional overtaking spot. If you're side by side, obviously you've got the move done. I'm sure someone will try it. Mm, well, uh, we'll see if we can... <laughs> that, that was oh, a, an ominous mm. Yeah, well, we saw Lauritsen try something very similar at, uh, at uh, Road America. Did, uh, yeah, Road America last time yes. out on... Uh, and unfortunately, Lauritsen can't be with us today. No, well, uh, that's, his, that's his own doing, but that's a, that's a different story. That's a story for another day. A big bump there, you don't realise it when you're watching normally, there's, there's such a big bump, but when it's they're going the, slowly, you see them really shake their suspension, don't you? It's on the inside of the track, much more pronounced on the inside than the outside, I've mm -hmm. uh, noticed that before actually. It's, uh, well, it's one of those which you don't want to be on, but uh, on the outside of the track it's, it's, Look at that it's not too bad. The field comes down. Oh, <laughs> bit of lag. There's lag there from <laughs> the um, one of the black cars that will be... Looks like Duarte Lopez, perhaps. Hopefully he sorts his connection problems out there, because that's something that people do not want to be dealing with. 
on the circuit right now. This is Jesper Tolberg we're looking at at the moment. He is the reigning champion, and he is the championship leader after after ser after um, server one after race one. But in front of him is VR, who's second in the championship. He's just two points behind, despite being taken out at race one by Lawrence, and he fought back magnificently to get fifth position, which became fourth position once Kaido uh, received a post-race penalty. Ended up being an FDR 1, 2, 3 at the front of the field in race 1 at Road America, despite the fact the Honda is not great in the straight line. So, as was, uh, anything can happen. It was a, the form it was guy doesn't necessarily mean anything, does it really? Abs absolutely. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say almost exactly <laughs> those words. That, uh, it, you know, pre-race stats and pre-race pace doesn't mean anything. Great minds. So, the field comes through the final corner, Ryan. They come to the line, here they come. And they're keeping their pace. Nice and slow to the line they go, and NATO will accelerate away from the line now and the race is on it's a good start there from NATO he's got the jump but the two behind are side by side Jesper looks like he's got the inside line on Keith Barrick the front of the field VR VR through on the inside of NATO NATO's hanging it tough on the outside though and VR does not force the issue oh way way off the track who is that looks like Reese Garner coming back on the track hopefully came back on the track safely because that was close it seems that Barrick was braver on the brakes into the first corner than Jesper Torvald because uh, Torvald looked like he had plenty of the inside line there he was fending off Kayado as well. Doesn't look like there's been many moves at the moment. No, there hasn't. Just last, last game two. So was Nelson. So was Braham. So he's had the start that he needed to the race. But the big loser, of course, is Reese Garner. He's lost nine positions. Ten positions either, even. And, oh, looks straight away. Barrett is right onto the back of Vio and NATO. Barrett will be sniffing around early on, trying to get a, get a move done on these two. And he's straight in behind Vio, so uh, Vio... Unable to use the draft into the uh, sweeping right-hander that we were talking about before the race, not really an overtaking opportunity. And uh, Barrack straight in behind, slipping around, getting a little bit squirmy, and uh, controlling it with the draft very well. Yeah, wasn't it? Out of that corner. Shot out the corner. That's what a rear-wheel drive does for you. But Barrack didn't waste any time at all getting right onto the front of that Portuguese driver, did he? He, he really knew he couldn't afford to let them get away, even like even a second lead. He's a lot in these cars, considering how how hard they try just to get the, uh, the tenth here and there. The uh, qualifying was obviously very tight uh, at the front. There was about six tenths or something between the top eight, and uh, that just shows how competitive this league is, even with Super Bowl qualifying. The slight NATO mistakes, like, hard. Yeah, he's nearly onto the grass there for NATO, and uh, Via will be looking to, to capitalise on those little mistakes by his compatriot. Oh, now Barrick is right in behind Via. And Villar's got defensive, Villar knows that's has to go defensive here. And yes, with Torborg's looking in behind for any scraps that fall from this table. Villar is defensive on the inside. Barrett's going for the cutback. Is it going to work? It's almost working, it's almost working. Oh, Villar just gets back across in time for turns two and three. These big sweepers. And NATO's disappearing. I fear this is what would happen if NATO did not, did not get unsettled earlier on. Just needs to keep keep his cool, and he will just disappear from the field because he's got the absolute pace to destroy this field here. As long as he keeps his car together after the pit stop also as well. But here it is now. Four cars throw a blanket over them. Via Barrett, Torborg, Kaido. Look at this. Almost staggered as they go down towards turn four. Flying into the turn there. Side by side. Barrick is slightly wide. Will he get back across? Will Torborg take advantage at all? Barrick running right out to the grass also as well. Barrick very nearly lost position there to Talbog and Talbog's lost out to Kayado now oh, and Kayado's going through on the Kayado. inside. Brilliantly opportunistic from Kayado oh, there. Superb. Came from absolutely nowhere and he's uh, he's done Talbog so Barrick will have to be careful now because Kayado obviously uh, in, in some way affiliated with the leading two so he'll want to get in front of Barrick if he can. Vincent Khan in behind yes, the Talbog as well and look at Talbog's run on Kayado who wants to take that position back as soon as he possibly can. It's also difficult to, break, to, to pass anybody here because there's no real huge braking zones. It's very much nose to tail drafting race and as you can already see look at NATO with his lead 1.3 seconds after sector 2 of lap 1 we're on board with season 2 champion Vincent Carr. He showed excellent glimpses of pace uh, returning pace at Road America before he was cruelly taken out of the first race by um, Miguel NATO and that ruined of course his second race as well because he was further down the grid but he's looking to make amends here. He's just picked himself off picked himself up sorry dusted himself off and uh, come back in the Volvo S60 and fastest lap of the race, Miguel Nato, 52.743, looking ominous. 
He does look very ominous. It's uh, that's a very strong pace actually, considering uh, he was only he was nine tenths quicker only in qualifying. So NATO putting the hammer down and uh, making sure he gets a gap early on, and he's already gapped Via by over a second. So he's uh, doing all he can as we look at Pedro Amaral on the back of uh, the orange car. Who is that? That is uh, Hugo Gonçalves. Hugo Gonçalves. So he's right right in behind. His compatriot, it's uh, Portuguese drivers all over the place. <laughs> there is like. Portuguese drivers all over the place. But the, at the front of the field, here we are. This battle's on once again. Via and Barrick and Kaedo. Tom will just back off this group. Again, side by side. Oh, Barrick sideways. He's trying that move around the outside. Oh, he's hit Via. He's hit Via on the, on the comeback. And now Kaedo's taking advantage on the grass. Contact. Contact between the two, and Kaido is trying to make the same move he did on Torbog, and Barak is fighting hard. He's fighting very hard indeed. That was gutsy, ballsy driving from all of them there. Khan challenging Torbog now. He wants a piece of the action. Torbog's going to get mugged once again. Surely, no, no. He spends him off, and Vincent Khan just pulls his nose out of it. But Keith is fighting so hard here. It looks so determined. Obviously, the body language of the car. Don't you think so, <laughs> <laughs> that was unbelievable racing. How no one uh, changed position there is uh, is anyone's guess, really. And Talborg very nearly lost out to Khan as and well. And looking so aggressive. This is the most aggressive I've seen him drive for many a race. You can't give a BMW a tap and get away with it, though. I mean, the BMWs rear-wheel be drive. Careful, yes. They're very, very difficult to uh, to uh, regain control of a rear-wheel drive car compared to a front-wheel drive car. So Keith got away with that one. But he would have had to. Um, either given up his position back to Via uh, to avoid a penalty um, or hopefully it wasn't uh, reviewed and uh, he got a penalty for it but uh, as, it, as it happens it's all status quo somehow somehow I mean, yes somehow, there were three, I mean, three almost three wide at one point and, that's uh, absolutely unbelievable how did he with the wall there I'm not quite sure how Via yeah. saved his how Barrick saved his around the outside how Kaido didn't end up being a shot into the wall as, a, as he tried to go to the inside of Barrick I'll never know and uh, looking back from Kaido now at Jesper Torbo, the gap from NATO to VR is now two seconds. And that's a big gap. It really is a big gap in this company. But you see how close they are. A bit more spread out this time around, so maybe there's a bit more calm. Let's run you through the field very, very quickly. As Torbo is fifth. Vincent Khan is sixth. King Lasky is seventh. Darius Hugo Gonsalves is fended off. Amaral is now in eighth. In ninth is Duarte Lopez. Eleventh is Eric Nelson. Twelfth there is Alessio Luque. Look at him speeding into this corner. Thirteenth is Matthias Klein. 14th, Yuri Braham, 15th, Swiderski, 16th, Lennon, 17th is Paul Wood. Sorry, Robert Isle, sorry. Paul Wood's just in behind him in the Sayat Leon. 19th place, Reg, 19th place, Reggie Blaine, way back. There's been some incidents back in the field, look. Because Reggie Blaine, Corey Slade, has just come out the pits. Hugo Barbosa just, um, has just way back in the field also. Well, looks like he maybe is pitted at some point. Ellen Lucchese is pitted also. And Reese Garner. So I wonder if they're just going for an early strategy, or maybe there's been an incident. What do you think, Toby? I think oh, more is, like Vath is, is uh, a DNF. Just going to say that Vath is DNF, so it's it's probable that was there was an incident that we've missed. Obviously, we've been watching the front of the field and the uh, the battling that's going on. Uh, Vince Khan obviously uh, right up behind Talborg again, and look at those three. As you were saying, you could throw a blanket over them, and quite frankly, it's line of stern from them and backwards. They head now. Oh, diving into the pits. Diving into the pits comes Kaido. Diving into the pits also is Vincent Khan. Oh, Kaido! He's way out of the groove there. He's almost missed the pits. He may receive a penalty for that because that was almost dangerous driving because Torborg almost absolutely cleaned him up. He was and very, is, very lucky there to And uh, the white uh, line avoid rule him. is pretty solid, isn't it, Toby? Yeah, I think I think that'll be looked at. Oh, the point. Look, they're all in the pits. Uh, into the pits. Look apart the from the leaders, everyone's come into the pits. This will be interesting. Who else had left on track? Well, they didn't left on track this time around. Who went wrong last time? Here is Reggie Blaine. Yeah, everybody. Apart from the, apart from the top eight, I think I believe. Yes, everybody apart from the top eight as they are now. Wow. Braham is hopefully just trying to. He's, he's just trying to get some clear track, isn't he? I think. He's not that yeah. far off, you know. Being able to challenge perhaps for eighth place because he's only five seconds behind Amaral, who's who was occupying ninth at the time. So, it could be possible for Braham. We'll see. I mean, Graham will have been disappointed with his qualifying performance, so uh, we'll, we'll see whether he can do anything from there. Hugo Gonçalves as well, uh, staying out on track, and Kane Lasky looking up in fifth place now. Absolutely, he's still going very solid here. They're all, all very spread out at the moment. This was told from 1.2 seconds back from, from Keith Barrett, who is keeping tabs on VR. He's not letting VR get away at all, is he? He's, uh, he's 
he's not really gapping them, no. And uh, we'll see whether those two... Indeed. Half yeah, a second, look. Half a second. I know. We'll see whether Vera and Kabarik will stay that way after oh, the pits. I yeah, mean, it's uh, surely going to pit the same lap, I think, which will be perhaps this lap. And it's got to be this lap, hasn't it? Everyone else it, is coming. It, it could be a swap in the pits, and a half a second is, is almost nothing. But Kyrie is pushing so, so hard in the pits there. I thought it was going to be a huge accident. Either with the end of the pit wall or with Torborg. How, how he got away with that one, I don't know. But uh, here we go then. Everyone all streaming in. into the pit lane. We're all Let's in. See if anyone can do what Kyrie did. Is Lasky in? Yep. Amaral? Yep. Braham? Yes. Uh, Braham. I don't know about Braham just yet. Must yes, be. he is. Yes. He has had no choice then. He's gone so wide. <laughs> so into the pits they come. Is NATO in the pits? No, he's not. NATO, not NATO in says, the pits. oh. We well, see, he already had a big enough gap, so. He did. Whether or, whether or not he's just staying out that extra lap, m making sure that his tyres are fresh towards the end. But I think he'll be jumped here, you know, because he's done a well. He's done a 52.9. That's still no, a very two good and a half lap seconds time. lead. 52.9 half seconds lead. Here they come. Now they come all lined up in the pit lane. And here goes Vera out now, and Barrick is still stationary. And Barrick drops the ground. The way he goes, he's not managed to gain the position. Looks like Torborg's gained a huge amount of ground. Look at that. He was 1.2 seconds behind. I hope he doesn't sped in the pit lane, but obviously they do concertina a little bit. Here comes the field, look. Here, here comes oh, the it's field on, it's through. On, it's on Kyrou's through, look. Kyrou's, Kyrou's made a stick. He's done the undercut and Khan almost getting past Torborg. Oh, he's trying to push Torborg along. Looking back now for Torborg. Ah, Vincent Khan. A bit of luck there for Vincent Khan. Pushing the back. I'll not watch that camera view. We'll watch it from this point of view, thank you. The more professional looking. Keith Barrick is now... Harrying Kayado, he knows he needs to get past Kayado. He knows he cannot afford to have Kayado in front of him. Oh, around the outside, try and get This isn't going to work. Oh, he's done it three it's times never now. Never going to work. Either time. Look at that, comes to play Tauborg as well. He has. Superb that move there from Vincent Khan. Oh, trying to go up the inside of his great nemesis and season two rival, Keith Barrick. Both of them from Canada. And Barrick is all over Andrew Kayado like a cheap suit. Swarming all over him. Sai was out that corner as well. I don't know how he managed to do that because it's supposed to be understeering that point, Keith. But VR, yeah. says, thank you very much. I'll, get, I'll take that 1.3 second gap over the rest of you. Why you just squabble? And NATO's into the pits. Yeah, I think NATO will still come out in the lead, and VR is, go is going to gap Kayado and Barrick as they squabble here as well. So I think oh, it'll. Here we are. They're back on with a four car battle again. Yeah, I think it'll still be a 1 2 uh, for those two. Um, but, but we're still going to see this incredible battle for third. Watch oh, how close oh, they are. As close as possible to the back of Vincent Khan. Can he get any closer? I'm sure Vincent Khan's not feeling very comfortable with Torborg right behind him there. And as they come around the final corner, Keith Barrick sideways correcting the car. He knows he needs podiums. He needs podiums, podiums, podiums. Here comes Torborg. Torborg got, got Torborg to win of the championship last year. And he's got a great run off the final corner. Vincent Khan's trying it. to squeeze him onto a different line. Ooh. Oh, no, no, get sideways. Oh, I thought he was going to make it, then he's not going to quite make it. It's going to be side by side now as we return to two and three. Usually the person who has the inside has the advantage, but Khan is fighting it out. Now he has the inside for this bit here, however. I think he's going to get the overlap. He's got his eyes, there got you the go. and squeeze across. And look who's coming up behind them. Kane Lasky. Thank you very much, boys. I'll join in as well. He's had an excellent run up to seventh position. He's right in behind Fantastic. these two now as well. This gap um, is nothing. They've been loving this. Kayado gaps now. Barrick just a little bit. Lasky's going through on the inside, he's trying to have a look at Powerball. Look how close oh, they are. Corner's so, so fast. Three tenths between them. Now Barrick's back, uh, gap this battle now also as well. He thinks it's impossible for any of this, these three to get up towards Barrick now because of the gap. And some, oh, and Keith Barrick is going through on Kaido at least trying. It's on the outside once again. He just cannot seem to get an inside run for the he life of cut back. He needs to cut back. He needs to use that do exactly what he did then. Do exactly what he did then and cut back. A late dive up the inside here would work as well. He's going to make a move here. Is he... Oh, oh he's, he's, oh, he's oh, thinking oh, about it. Oh, he's okay. thought about it. I thought about it. Oh, he needs to be more decisive. He should have just gone for it. Oh, he's on the grass. He's on the grass. And here comes Vincent Khan. Vincent Khan's trying to go on the inside. His top of fending off Lasky also as well. He's back to a four-car battle again. Oh, and here comes Talbot. Look at the run that Talbot got then. Khan oh, covered him and off. Khan just held him off. That was oh. close. That was close. I thought Talbot had enough of a run. This is hotting up. The, the more these guys squabble, the more guys catch up and make it a bigger battle. Hugo Gonzalez is not far off his group either now. 
1.5 seconds. NATO and Veer have run away now and look at the gap, it's three seconds yes. back to Kayado. And yes. Khan's gone defensive early, Talwog on the outside, let's see if Talwog can make it work Seems on the uh, the other side of him this time. Seems to be struggling through that final corner, isn't he, Vincent Khan? But the thing is, Talwog can't attack too hard because he might have Lasky up his inside. And Lasky, Lasky is not uh, backwards about coming forwards at all. He's got he nearly had the overlap then with uh, yeah. Kane Lasky, he'll be better, better off in the slipstream. And uh, well, lost a little bit of ground now as a result, it looks like, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, but now. Vincent Khan will now go defensive, I told you. Khan's gone to the inside of the track. Look at the slipstream, just edging up. But it's just not quite long enough this straight. Just, all you have to do is just go in the middle. And then you're, you're okay because the banking's right there. There's the banking, go in the middle. Thank you very much. Keep the position. Oh, 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 oh
Yeah, it was. It was an excellent save in the end from Keith. He was almost completely sideways, but uh, that's what that's what happens. You just floor the throttle in the front wheel drive car, and you can kind of save it. Mm -hmm. Remember, Plato at Brands Hatch did exactly the same in real life in the BTCC, and uh, Keith will have to settle for fourth position here. Unless Kaida makes a massive mistake, which I don't think will happen. And I think Vincent Kahn's got fifth place sewn up as well from Kane Lasky. So. Well, Lasky's only tenth behind Kahn, despite the fact that. They, that he was battling with Torborg, they were second behind. Torborg's got back past Gonsalves once again, who runs onto the grass, almost hit the wall quite hard there. But NATO is about to cross the line for the final time, well, not for the final time, for the penultimate time, should I say. This is the final lap, I was trying to say. Lap 12. I did say it was the final lap a second ago, but I was uh, getting excited. <laughs> this is now the final lap. <laughs> and uh, VR still in pursuit, but he no can do nothing about it, compatriot. Kaido there, in third. Will Gambaric get another chance? I don't think so. I think uh, I think Kaido has got this one done. And Barrett needs to be in the slipstream here in that Honda to, to catch up to the back of him. Let's uh, see if he can do it. But I don't think Barrett has quite got the pace to make up. Uh, what is that? Six tenths, seven tenths. Yeah, it's a bit of a gap, really. It's especially over just one lap against a caliber driver like Andre Kaido. Yeah, seven seven tenths is the gap, and I don't think. I don't think Barrick will do that. Kaido needs to make a big error for that to happen. Oh, look at this. Barrick is... <laughs> he's not giving up, though. He's definitely trying. But Vincent Kahn and Lasky, this battle is not over by any means. Lasky's been storming through the field, really. Getting faster and faster as the race goes on. And Lasky trying to get one over on his relentless teammate. In slightly different teams. It's Kahn and Blaine and Lasky and Klein. The two teams fighting for that team's championship, which is being led at the moment by FDR Candem, but would likely go to Team Portugal after this particular event. Oh, and Khan has been hit by Lasky again. It's deja vu for poor Khan. He gets going again, and here comes Torbog. Torbog's taking advantage. Torbog's going to go through. Will Lasky give the position back to Khan because Lasky just nailed the back there. Oh, Vincent Kahn, Vincent Kahn, sideways, he's in the wall. Oh, Vincent Kahn, Vincent, 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 his car is destroyed. His second race is now destroyed. And meanwhile, that's, while that's been happening, I apologise, I've not got the win for Miguel Nato. But Miguel Nato has won second place for Francisco VR, third place, Andre Cardo, fourth place, Keith Barrick. Just could not find a way past. Fifth well, place, line, Sixth place. His, uh, yes, Lasky and Talborg were side by side across the line, by the way, and uh, Lasky's just taken that from Talborg. That's on the same tenth look. No, absolutely. And Amaral behind them in, in seventh position, Gonsalves in eighth, Lucchese, Alessio Lucchese in ninth, Nelson in tenth. Yuri Braham made it in, up into eleventh position in the end from seventeenth on the grid. Matthias Klein in twelfth, Vincent Kahn all the way down to thirteenth. Poor bloke. The poor bloke, Vincent Kahn. It's happened two events in a row. What does this guy have to do to get a result, Toby? Oh, it just he needs it needs some luck from somewhere, and uh, he's not getting it at the moment. And uh, obviously the uh, the top few cars get reversed for the second race, and Vincent Kahn now down in thirteenth is not going to get that, that advantage. So, oh, so so sorry for it. Feel so sorry for him here. He was having such a great run. Yeah, he got the tap and he was back into 7th place, or maybe even 8th place, but he just lost it once again in the next corner. I wonder if he's just his composure had just gone. He just kept his composure, he could have recovered, perhaps, yeah. the second race. That's, he, that's the thing, isn't just, it? One mistake, at, or one spin, leads to another instance, and we see, we've seen that before, with uh, Keith Barrick before at Road America. That, <laughs> uh, not Road America, the top Laguna road. Seeker. <laughs> <laughs> he watches this we broadcast back, he's going to be sat there with his head in his hands. Stop <laughs> mentioning that. Why? We like to bring it up. <laughs> 20th place for his car, 21st to Arta Lopez. He looked like he had a much better pace than that. He was up in like 10th position at one point, so I don't know what happened to him. Yeah. 22nd Corey Slade, 23rd Hugo Barbosa, and 24th to Bingos Vath. Did not manage to get the race finished, and he's, not, he's also not in his skin. Which means he's in trouble a, for that also. Yeah, a, why has he done that? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Never mind. And 25th place, rounding out the grid, but it's a broadcast car. <laughs> Use this broadcast car. <laughs> uh, talking about skins, I've just been uh, reliably informed that uh, Vincent Kahn is, uh, is someone's favourite, and they're very disappointed to see them uh, not winning the race. And, and who is that someone? Uh, and that, uh, that someone is uh, Bronnie, who... Uh, oh, really? That's her yes. favourite? Yes. Oh, I see. That's, that's her favourite. Is she actually watching at the moment? Yes, apparently so. <laughs> She's not got a bed to go to. I don't think so. <laughs> right. 
second race. Anyway, calm yourself on. down, boys. You've got two minutes. Um, come on, actually, let's, let's do a swing up at the race, Toby. Because <laughs> we didn't get a chance there. No, well, okay, quick sum up of the race. Uh, that was Expert uh, analysis from Toby Davis. Uh, that was Way a usual um, ATCC race, quite frankly. Uh, we see it uh, all the time. Uh, lots of uh, lots of incidents and uh, lots of exciting racing. And in the end, NATO did have the pace to walk away from the field, but only because of the battling going on behind. And uh, Kayado did a, uh, did a good move to get through past Keith Barrick, who obviously was trying... Uh, his best to get by, but didn't manage to. Got very, very sideways in uh, in trying to do so. <laughs> Several times into that corner, he didn't uh, give up, did he? It's not an overtaking spot. Five times into there. Keith, it's not an overtaking spot. <laughs> I, 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 I have to um, disagree there because I have overtaken around the outside there. Oh, well done. Yes, I'm, I'm just, just I'm uber skilled, aren't I? Obviously. <laughs> these, these are the only cars I can drive, by the way. So you can't drive <laughs> football drive, and I can. And it's the opposite way around in rear wheel drive, so... Uh, yeah, we, we, we have a little bit of banter here and there, but there we go. We do, indeed. Anyway, um, Hugo Gonsalves has taken pole position as a result of his... He has, indeed. Uh, and there he is on the trial. Of his, what is it, eighth position? He had in race Yes, four. eighth position. Yes, Toby. So, nice to know you know the rules of, the, of yes, this series already. I do know the rules. I do oh, know we've the been rules. commentating on it for several, for, uh, several races now. 3.21am, <laughs> just uh, by the way. <laughs> it's the same for me. Right, okay, serious time now. Amaral second place, second. Pedro Amaral. Third place, Jesper Tolbo. Fourth is Kane Lasky. Fifth is uh, Keith Barry. Sixth is Andre Carter. Seventh is VR. Watch for him coming through the rest of the field because he's got real drive, of course. And eighth place, Miguel Nate. It's going to be a difficult ask to get the double win, isn't it? It's, it's not going to happen, quite frankly. And, uh, oh, I don't there we have it. There sticking you your neck out. You are actually definitely yep. sticking your neck out that time. Well, if we'll see him, I think we'll see him get into about fourth place, but I don't think he'll... Uh, I'm not sure what they're doing. They are away from the grid. It's very slowly away from the grid, but away from the grid. And Hugo Gonsalves gets a great start to the race. VR is already going to be up into third, it looks like. VR, boom, seventh place to third. Through he goes. Oh, and Pedro Amaral is off the track, way off the track. Where's he gone? He's disappeared. Way oh, that's the roll! Oh! Oh, what's going on in the wall? Oh, Jorge Lopez. Uh, maybe Hugo Barbosa as well. And it's. VR into, he's in third, actually, he was going to be in second. He was and the behind Andre Gallardo and Hugo Gonzalez, Kane Lasky's up to fourth, he'll be pleased with that start. Keith Barrett keeps his formation there in fifth. The Kane's with a great start, how did he get sixth? Seventh place NATO, eighth place is Torbo. And there's Vincent Khan going down the inside of one of the Aerospeed Hondas. Who was that? It's Eric Nelson, Eric Nelson with people swarming all over him right now. Braham's going past them also as well on the outside as the field snakes their way through. Quite frankly, that was Mia instigating that uh, that turn one incident. He went very deep on the brakes on the inside of Amaral. Just gave Amaral a tap. He went wide and I have a feeling he made contact and uh, one of the Terrace oh, Australian was guys was, uh, was, was, I think, rolling. It must it looks like a say out to me, but it, it, this is uh, Paul Wood, uh, Robert Owls, who's furthest back in the field. Yeah, I think it, it, it potentially was him, but Gonzalez still leads from uh, Cayado, and Villa yes, might be in trouble for that. Well, uh, obviously, can't. Well, make uh, the I, next I, I would have to disagree, actually, in, in, in that particular instance. Um, I thought he was legitimately on the inside, and Amaral turned down extremely hard, perhaps. So, you know, obviously, we will we'll, we'll, we'll be reviewed on by the stewards, but. Um, I'm, I'm going to take the uh, the view of innocence. But then again, I do have a bit Fair of man love for, uh, for VR, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I could be extremely biased there. <laughs> the case is done well. Six, 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 it's a big gap from 5th to 6th, though. And here comes Torbon on Lucchese. He cannot afford that gap to get any bigger, can he? If he wants to get up towards the front of the field. And now here's VR and Lasky. Contact once again at the first turn. Oh, with VR. Oh, and VR just did not let Lasky back, back on the track, which is absolutely... And sideways in the background as well. Nato in 8th position at the moment and through goes Keith Barrick he's managed to make an overtake look <laughs> well done Keith um, but he's Paul Brooks he's, behind <laughs> race and a half now <laughs> he's, he's in 4th position he'll be happy with that and look at the leaders Cayado and Gonsalves this is Cayado's uh, chance this is Cayado's chance with all due respect to Hugo Gonsalves he's not quite as fast as the drivers around him yeah, just behind and Cayado goes through and Cayado if he can just get his head down he can do a Nato can't he he, he can, and uh, he might actually be able to. Villar's very quick, of course, in behind, and he's not too far behi b uh, behind, and so is Barrick, uh, almost line and stern as well. 
Um, but uh, Kyodo is in a very strong position. Oh, oh look at that! Oh. Wow! Oh. Just held on to that. Just put a half an inch of a wheel on the grass, it seems. And that's always the worst, isn't it? I always, I always find it's worse to put half an inch of a wheel on the grass than a full wheel. Well, that's that's because you, if you put just half an inch of the rear tire on, you've you've lost all grip. But if you put the boat, if you put a whole side on, then you tend to you tend to sort of straight line it a little bit easier. And, and uh, that's it. Challenging Keith Barrick in the same. Oh, oh Fiat! What are you doing, Fiat? It's not like you. And Keith Barrick going to take advantage. Lasky is also as well going to go around the outside. This is going to be. Oh, oh Lasky on the inside. Lasky on the inside of Barrick is close. It's very close indeed. Looking back from Lasky and Fiat. Oh, oh. What way? There we go. Barrick now looking back at Lasky. Into the corner they come. Bank turn they come. And Barrick is taking advantage of everything that's happening here at the moment. If someone gets held up, he's through. He's looking very, very quick indeed. I'm very impressed by his aggressive driving here today. Very assertive driving. Very positive. But Lasky's got the run now. And maybe he's going to take that position back. Oh, VR's losing all kinds of ground. Maybe he has some damage from that. that Look run, at NATO. That here comes NATO. Oh, almost running the back of his great rival, Torbo Lem. Lucchese is through, though. And so is Lasky. So is Lasky on Barrick. Well, they're side by side. Look, and uh, oh, this is this is Barrick in front of uh, in front of Lasky. Lasky will be able to get back in the slipstream here. Oh, Barrick just about closed him off there. That was close. But uh, hit, but this is where Lasky will be back in the slipstream of Barrick, and he's got just a slight slight advantage in a straight line. And well, Barrick Kyodo up front has has gapped the field just a little bit. He's got four tenths on the oh, no, field. Into this corner, though, of course, because he's attacking four the breath behind. Look at these boys! Oh, this is this is carnage in behind. How is Torbo got past VR as well? Has VR got damage from that map one incident, perhaps? Because well, he didn't he's hit making some great uncharacteristic mistakes and extremely slow right now. I don't think he hit anything. Uh, I with really with, don't. with uh, Amaral. Oh yes, yeah, no, perhaps, yeah, of course. Oh, he's oh, been very aggressive. He's trying to get past Torbo, but now he's trying to get past him. Not Nate much will pass between the two teammates. Oh, and Nathan's on the inside, and he just gives a little bit of hip and shoulder there to Francisco Villa and Yuri Braham's taking advantage of all of that speaks through on Villa as well so Villa's, Villa's just walking backwards through the pack he had an excellent he start up to second at almost at one point and he's now he's just walking back through the pack he's, he's got, looks like he's got no now. pace no pace at all looks yeah. like he's got uh, maybe no, two or three lap all, t all the tyres the way it's driving at the moment but Barrick is just trying to cap Lasky desperately I know how this feels when you know you're just slightly faster than the driver behind you just need to just do a couple of good corners, just get away. And he's he's trying it. He's trying it. It's it needs to be oh, well in front. Perfect, perfect through there. Yeah, yeah. He needs to be well in front of Lasky though. Lasky in the slipstream is a very dangerous uh, proposition. And we saw Lasky going through on the inside into turn one. Who's that in the pits? Actually, that wasn't the pits. I couldn't quite see. Is it Amaral? It is Amaral in the pits. So he's pitting. I wonder if he's pitting early. He must be pitting early. Just repair that damage or get. Whatever it is out of his system, calm himself down. But he's been the victim of circumstance twice now in two events. So poor him and Khan can uh, get together over a beer tonight and have a little blub. <laughs> because they both have the same look and it's all bad. Yeah, uh, that's done enough to get uh, out of just the... About, uh, just about, just yeah. about. Shrug the stick stream off. It's just edging towards him. Isn't it? That, that gone purple and black Honda. Tarbog on the KZ is very tight as well. Here he oh, comes on the inside. This is going to be close. McKay's got enough of an overlap on the outside to be able to hold it. Now he's got the inside down towards turn five. Oh, I, oh, I thought there was actually McKay's coming across the Torvald there, but actually he was just coming across because he had the overlap done. And look at NATO, he's in seventh. He's, he's managing to fend off Yuri Braham, but VR is just dropping way back. He's now under threat from people like Ed Swiderski. And, and Matthias um, Klein there as well. Matthias Klein as well. And Eric Nelson and Vincent Kahn, who's still in 13th, having started there. Yeah, he hasn't made up—he hasn't made up the ground that he needed to, and uh, he's been sort of stuck battling. Uh, as has NATO, actually. I thought NATO would do a little bit better than he has, but it, so, it shows how difficult it's to pass. And look at that Via on the grass again, nearly got it, uh, nearly got it sideways. But Casey, I've been very impressed with the Casey to stay in fifth position. He's Absolutely. done an excellent job of uh, of holding off Jesper Talborg. And uh, Lucchese in a very strong position for a top Oh, five. Barrick on the grass, pushing too hard. Barrick on the grass, pushing too hard. He'll be able to shake the next corner here. If Lasky can just get a good run, he'll have be able to put pressure on him once again. That's going to be a costly mistake, isn't it? Because now we're going to come up to the area where Lasky can switch for him. And uh, Barrick trying to push so hard to uh, to get that gap that he needs. 
And uh, Gosford's on the card. Gosford's out there. Where is he? No, he's not. It's impressive and... from Gosford. It's very impressive. Oh, look how, look how wide they are. And this is where oh, Lassie's going to be battle. strong. Four strong again, this battle. There's Lucchese hitting it up. Oh, looks like Tobble's getting pushed around the track at the moment by NATO. NATO wants to get a good result. So this, is why, this is why Lucchese is able to stay out front. He's got very good top speed in that car. And uh, he's just been defending every time they've got up close into that long right hander and uh, way, huh? look, at the, look at the slipstream look how much the slipstream makes for Bia there oh down the inside on top of this time has it made a mistake he can't quite see oh, he's oh they touch the is contact the case is sideways the is going to go through the case in contact he didn't need to make that then he just needs to stay where it was because now Braham has booked him also as well that could have been more intelligent for the case he was going to be passed by Torbog but he could definitely have stuck it out and got back at NATO it's, it's, uh, he's so got his headlights on as well, as well. Oh, side by side again! Braham shuffled out by NATO. And uh, NATO's doing a good job here, actually. He's been quite patient up to this point. And look in the background, VR has actually caught them up a little bit. I wonder if we'll see anyone pitting this lap round. We saw it before that they started to pit on lap five. And look at this! Just a gaggle of cars! On the inside! Oh! On contact! As Braham tries to go get a little bit of an overlap on NATO. Bit of contact. And the case is through. Thank you very much. Here comes VR as well. Oh, Braham's, you know, Braham's lights are also as well. People just turn your lights off, boys, because you're going to get penalised. Unless they, uh, they still think that's how you enter the pit lane, but it's... Uh, oh, well, it might be, oh, of course, that, this is the lap that you, you turn yeah. your lights on enter the pit lane, of course. Uh, but the is not, so he's in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he goes around the track now. Oh, he's into the pits. He's not used the pit oh. lane properly. So he'll be in trouble for that. Oh, oh no! no! Braham's hit Lucchese. In the pits they come. Oh, look. oh it's not no collisions in the pits. I think they're saving more collisions then. <laughs> Lucchese somehow gets away with that one. But, oh, that's that's such a shame for Lucchese. I was saying how well he was doing up in the top five and defending so well. And now oh, I think Braham will be uh, b be looked at for that one. But he is staying out on track. And so is Talborg. And, and so, so is Barrick. And, and so, so is Gonsalves. <laughs> Barrick can't do anything about Gonsalves at the moment. Will Barrick get undercut by v by Glasky? Because the gap was not very much at all, was it? I think he will. I think he will be because we, we saw that before. Barrick will, get, Barrick will get undercut once again. He'll not be happy about that. We saw that before with Vincent Khan. Vincent Khan made up positions by pitting a lap early, and Barrick's missed the uh, missed the banking a little bit there as well. So mm -hmm. still, the pace is still pretty good up front. 52 nines. That's only a few tenths off, but. Uh, Still on fresh consistent rubber. Consistent 9 as well there from Kaido. It's a very consistent lap time. And Gonsalves yeah. is sticking right with him. Keeping Kaido extremely honest. It's all about that pit lane though. It's a very dangerous pit entry actually. I didn't realise quite how dangerous it was. It is a very dangerous pit entry. Right, with the speed that you carry through the final corner of course. Mm. Which is like, almost flat out. Just down one gear. And just let the car suck in. In fourth gear that is. And last gear. Here he is. He's got clear track as well. This could work beautifully to his advantage. And Barrett could get undercut once again. Like he was in the first race by Kaido. We'll, uh, we'll have to watch that one very carefully indeed. Well, and uh, I think, uh, I'll stick my neck out, I think Kane Lasky will do him, you know. Yep, I'm going to have to agree. Because Lasky's got absolutely clear trap, there's nobody behind him for miles, look. There's NATO. I fancy NATO might have gained on Lasky, you know, actually. Mm. Out of all that. Just, uh, just, a, 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 just a tad, maybe half a second. Definitely pulled away from Braham, because they were nose to tail. Maybe Braham was upset by... What happened with Lucchese, of course, because we would have held him up also. Hopefully, Braham didn't speed in pit because maybe that wasn't um, maybe that was the reason that he, uh, he yeah. hit. Yeah, Lucchese. So it should, could be a double whammy there for Braham. That's a good call. I'd, uh, we'll have to watch that one carefully as well, whether Braham needs to do a, a drive through and uh, and fix that one. Here they come then. So in the pit lane, we've got the leaders. I would I would get to them if I could, if the cameras would, there we go. <laughs> the cameras would change to the other view, and out of the pits already goes Kaido as Torbo comes to a stop. There's Barrick in the pits also as well. There goes Gonsalves. Looks like the Oh, Barrick! Back. Look, Barrick! Yeah, I was to say, Gonsalves looked like it was very slow. And Barrick's ahead. Barrick is, a oh, Barrick is ahead of Gonsalves. Here comes look, Lasky! Lasky here comes Lasky! Destroyed. Has he done it? Has he done it? They're going to be side he's by side, side by here. Side. Oh, Lasky can't do it! Surely he can! Oh, he's, he's got been pushed out wide by Gonsalves. Gonsalves is fighting back. Lasky has not done the undercut. I'm very surprised with that. But it must have been a superb pit stop from Barrick because... He's come out ahead of uh, um, Gonsalves. There's a two-second gap between them before the pit stop. Barrett put in an excellent lap and uh, obviously nailed the pit stop. Gonsalves is all over the back of him, though. He's got that better straight-line speed that we were talking about. 
And Lasky, look how quick oh, Lasky's he's... gone into there. It's nearly, <laughs> nearly alongside Gonsalves there. Gonsalves is going to have to watch from uh, from behind as well as in front of him. And Lasky's looking oh, very, very strong. Oh, Left the game. What's happened to Vinny? That's a big shame for him. And now, Hugo Gonsalves has gone from a comfortable second position to fighting for his life to hold on to third. Lasky, up oh, the inside. inside. Beautiful inside. move. What a beautiful move. move. And he's very, very late. Caught as well. He got okay. a beautiful apex still. And Braham is ahead. Oh, has NATO been in the pits? Because NATO is way back. Wonder if he had a drive through. Maybe. Oh, that's, that's surely not enough time though, because it's only six mm. seconds. And Braham has his lights on as well. Turn your lights off, my friend. Yeah. Here we meet. Very simple rule, unfortunately. It's difficult to tell over this race because you can't see your headlights. But it's a rule that all drivers must abide by. And VR is in the lead of this race at the moment. He's still not pitted. No, neither is uh, Hugo Barbosa. I wonder if they're... Hmm. Maybe VR was driving slowly to protect his tyres early on, but that's a very strange strategy to... Yeah, that to doesn't use. make sense to me. No. Uh, of course, they haven't third. pitted either. Not pitted either. So the effective lead of the race at the moment is Kaido. And he has Keith Barrett 3.2 seconds behind him. The gap was 3.1 before the pit stop, so the gap is slightly larger for Kaido. What can Barrick do? We saw in race one how fast Barrick could catch up to Kaido. Can he do it again? Lasky's got a big gap now back to Hugo Gonsalves. Torborg's got a big gap also. He's got Matthias Kleinman, Swiderski, NATO. Braham has had to make a pit lane drive through look. Oh, he's into the oh, pit. Stop, stop, go. Stopping again. Is it a stop go? Oh, stop go, yes. Yeah, got stop go. There we go. Apologies. I'm too used to our factor. <laughs> yeah, so, it, it seems that Yuri did speed into the pits. So it's a double whammy for him because he will be in trouble for obvi obviously the contact. <coughs> Excuse me. But also he's had that drive as well. It's just ruined his event completely. And he's now way back in 18th position. Reggie Blaine and Reese Garner are also out of the race. Look. It can't be as bad as, uh, as what happened to Vincent Kahn. He's looking very strong in the first race. Had, to, had that race ruined and, uh, and obviously disconnected or uh, crashed out of this one. And uh, such and a shame. Will he get held up by Corey Slade? Will this help, help Barrick? Gap is 3.3 seconds, so it's not not gaining at all, isn't Barrick? If Slade's got any sense, he'll let him straight through. Yeah, absolutely, and he does, and do, he does, does do so. Good yeah. driving there from Corey. There's no yeah. point getting tangled up in a battle. He's on a completely different strategy, absolutely. and uh, not really racing these guys He's either. a completely different race, really, isn't he? Yeah. So, uh, just it makes no sense to battle. Don't hit the wall. Oh. <laughs> Very close indeed. And Barrick, let's see the gap as they cross the line. I'm interesting to see this. He's gap last year, is, is not... Um, giving up on the back of Lask, is he? It doesn't look like Lask no. has enough pace to be able to catch up, perhaps. The pace to keep with with them, but not to catch. Barrick has gaps Lasky significantly this lap. Look at that, 1.1 seconds now. Yep, and, and the gap uh, between Kaido and Barrick is 2.8. So it has come down. It's come down by enough. VR must be pitting this time around. He's left it, left it very, very long indeed. So is Hugo Barbosa. He's in second place, enjoying his... His little um, moment in the limelight. Hugo with not a capital H. Not with a capital H. Maybe I have to just change that so it looks a little bit more professional there, Hugo. <laughs> Andre Cardo is basically going to be our leader once those two have stopped. Absolutely, and of course there's three laps to go after this lap. There's Corey Slade. There is Keith Barrick. Here's Lasky and Gonsalves. Lasky can't afford to make a mistake because Gonsalves will come through. This He's is the effective battle. Knowledge of his speed. This is the effective battle for the podium as well. And uh, Talborg. Talborg is very alone in the 8th position at the yeah, moment, which is a net 6th. Yeah, it's Or a maybe a net 7th, depends where VR comes out. I think it'll be... Uh, well, I don't know. It might be tight between those two, but remember, Talborg was ahead. Wasn't he ahead? He was. He was just about ahead. But the, the, the whole of the midfield has just been mixed up completely, because now NATO's back in 10th. This is just typical of NATO's drives, I'm afraid. You know, extremely fast in race 1, but can't back it up. You know, race after race. He's, look, you, mistake, can see him just, come. you can see him just making small errors all over the place when he's not when he's not out front and he's and he's in the pack. I'm afraid he's a completely different driver. And, Absolutely. Uh, so I'm not saying, not saying he was involved in anything in particular. No, he might have no, actually no, no, been taken out by, by somebody else himself. But of course, this happens time and again, doesn't it? It's something that NATO needs to you know, get out of his system because he'll, frank, frankly, will never become a champion until he can back up races. We can just do two races in a row that are good because one race one race out of two is not good enough. No, you, you need to you need to put in consistent performances. Oh, look at these! Into the pits. All over the place. Oh, Corey's trying to get the pits. Oh, yeah. Barrick has been held up by that badly. Look at that! 
And now Lass is right onto the back of him. That was a 1.1 second gap at the start of the last it lap. It was. Marek just caught in exactly the wrong position. Here comes Lass. Gap is at 0.2. <laughs> gap is 3.7 seconds to Kaido now. So Kaido got this one in the absolute bag. Three laps to go. Can afford to lose 1.3 seconds lap and still just about finished ahead of Barrick. I can't do maths. It's 1.2 since I apologise. Via now comes out of the pits. He's going to be level with Matthias Klein. And Tomok's now in fifth. I said it was a net sixth though, in fact it was a net fifth, I apologise. And VR and Klein side by side down the straight here. VR just trying to desperately get the best result possible from what's been a poor race. He was back in like ninth or tenth at one point, so if he can get sixth, he'd be very, very happy with that indeed. Yeah, gonna, uh, he's going to have to depend hard from Klein later on in this race. I think Klein is up for taking that position off Via. Via obviously is on the pressure rubber, so... The and pressure of course. rubber, of course, so I would... I would guess that VR would just, would just pull away now. Although the gap between Lasky and Barrick is extremely tight, and this is the battle for second position. This is second, third, and fourth. No, Barrick, well, Lasky, and Gonsalves. This is the biggest battle on track at the moment. And they've already the same shot as well. So, yeah, as two, with two laps left. And uh, you call it. Who do you think will uh, come out on top of this one? I think Barrick. Just about Barrick, I would say. Yeah, it might just have enough in the bag. We might uh, see uh, Lasky just nose up the inside somewhere, just to test it. Test the water. Well, we've seen him make a, we've seen him make an excellent couple of moves um, before, and a, a, a couple of uh, slightly aggressive dodgy ones. He made one on Vincent Khan in race one that left. He did, unfortunately. Yes. And their teammates, but, of course. Remember that. Yeah. No, that, that, that'll be interesting in their. Uh, well, in their channel. channel brief. Willie Watt, I'm sure, will be throwing uh, throwing teacups in the uh, in the dressing room afterwards. <laughs> very nice, uh, very nice, uh, very nice coloured cars, but uh, not when they're sideways and in the barrier. No, not not quite as uh, good looking then, are they? No. Penultimate lap now then, Kaido has been in charge of this race pretty much from the off, from about lap two when he got past Hugo Gonzalez, his compatriot. Gonzalez is now in fourth, so just five seconds back, not far back at all. Lasky and Barrick half a second apart, VR in the lonely fifth. Francesco, and uh, Torbog in the lonely fifth, sorry. Francesco VR is not far behind Torbog at all. The gap's 1.7 seconds. That's no. not beyond the realm of possibility. He's got, he's because got fresh, fresh rubber as well, hasn't he? He has indeed. Gaps, completely gapped from Matthias Klein. And, uh, Let's look at that. <laughs> the I, one I, second. I should never have opened my mouth by Klein, really. <laughs> um, but uh, VR, VR well, definitely... The gap's now 1.9, look. Yeah, he's got the... Yeah, but that's the uh, that's the straight line speed section, isn't it? So uh, Yeah, well, VR's supposed to be better in the uh, straight line speed oh, between yeah, the Honda. Well, let's, well, let's keep an eye on that one. Uh, but the more important battle, of course, is Lasky and, uh, Lasky and Barrett. Which has now calmed down quite a lot, look. Look at yeah. how much how much this track um, Lass is using. I mean, I know I know you're uh, a big. Uh, what's the word? You have a bit of a beanie bonnet about that. People using not using all of the track. No, it really and irritates that, me. And that's a classic example, isn't it? Just Use no, all of the track. Just no need to narrow your angle sound. <laughs> really is. Look, that's better. Right on the outside of the white line. Absolutely. Use the, clip the apex. Run Perfect. all the way to the outside of the white line. Good boy. There you go. <laughs> He's doing it all the way around the track. It's very very good indeed. That's exactly how you need to be. If you want to be quick. Use all of the track. Use all of your available equipment, which includes the track, of course. It's the track. first rule. The, yeah, the track is a tool. The track is not something to be scared of. It's a tool. Oh, yeah. Uh, something that not a lot of people, uh, not a lot of people get. And if you can get away with dipping a wheel on the grass and it's, it's quicker, then do it. It's uh, might not. Yeah, if you get away with missing the corner, then do it. And I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I would never encourage that sort of thing. NATO now in eighth. No. I wonder if he'll be able to catch Matthias Klein. He's got one lap to do it going to be a hard ask I think it's very very spread out actually in this second race and lots of carnage which I don't think we've quite seen we're watching the other things happening in the midfield something's definitely happening at the midfield hasn't it there's been a big incident because NATO was in that mix and dropped back and very hard of course and of course Alessio Lucchese poor Alessio Lucchese here he is I feel, I feel so sorry for him up in fifth I mean, 11th still a good result for Lucchese but uh, he'll be disappointed I think he'll be disappointed with that 12th is Wood 13th is Gary Lennon 14th place is Eric Nelson who's been um Followed very closely by Duarte Lopez. There's Pedro Amaral just getting out of the way of everybody. I thought he was trying to pass his compatriot then, but he wasn't. Oh, hello, Duarte. Tracks over there, mate. So he gets back on. Line. Just about. <laughs> Hugo Barbosa, exactly the same thing in the background. I hope that's not a consistent uh, line they've been taking. Uh, they, they should be okay. He's not particularly fast. We're not sure how, how much shape you get out of when you do that. Maybe we can break a little bit later into the first corner if you consistently do it. But of course, that will be uh, definitely dealt with. Those sort of things do not go do not go unnoticed, unfortunately. Do not no. escape the Raya Wrath, as someone once told me. <laughs> the Raya Wrath. 20th place, Elio Lucchese. 
And his first is Amaral. Poor Amaral. I know, it all down to that attack, lap one incident, it? wasn't it? That lap one, turn one incident. And uh, and it was... Uh, I, I, I disagree with you. I think uh, VR might... Well, we'll have to have a look at it, of course. But uh, VR... We're going to have one of those, I respect your opinion, but I think you're wrong. Fair enough. <laughs> no problem. No problem. And uh, it will definitely come out in the wash, of course. Yep. And uh, here is our race winner elect. He's coming towards the final corner. And this will be Andre Kaido's first Touring Pro Series win. And he has shown potential. He weaves across the line in delight. Look how pleased he is with that result. Weaving across the line. He's very, very pleased indeed. And it's another Portuguese driver who takes the win here again. Second place, Keith Murray. Third place, Lasky. Fourth place, Gonsalves. Last year it was NATO and VR. This time it's NATO and Kaido. Fifth place, Lonely Torborg. A little bit frustrated with that. He got involved in many little niggles here and there. Sixth place, VR. Seventh place, Klein. Eighth place, Miguel Nato. Where he started, really. He will not be pleased with that, though, after the race one win. Ninth place, Widerski. Tenth place, Domingos Bar. Eleventh, Lucchese. Paul Lucchese. Twelfth, Gary Lennon. Thirteenth, Paul Wood. Fourteenth, Eric Nelson. Twelfth and fourteenth, the Aerospeed Drivers. Fifteenth, Duarte Lopez. Sixteenth, here is Yuri Braham. He's had a terrible event, really. Not what he was looking for. 17th place, Barbosa. 18th place, Corey Slade. 19th place, Robert Isles, pushing all the way to the end. One of the drivers involved in that lap one skirmish. We saw him, I think it was him on his roof. Must have been because Paul Wood is way up the field. And Elio Lucchese is now finishing the race. And I don't know why I got confused about the... Um, Deliveries because they're actually different, aren't they? One's blue and one's green. <laughs> so yeah. we just ignore me. <laughs> Elio Lucchese finishes in 20th position. 21st is Pedro Amaral. 22nd, Vincent Kahn, who didn't manage to finish the race, unfortunately. 23rd, Blaine, likewise. And 24th, Reese Gardner. So again, Reese Gardner, unfortunately, not able to produce his one lap speed into a race result. We are going to be joined now by the drivers who are going to join us. For some driver interviews, and as per usual, Mr. Keith Barrick is in our driver interview box because he always does so well that uh, <laughs> he managed to get interviews. Uh, um, well. Keith, uh, I mean, the first race, he just could not pull the pass off to save a life. Nope. It just could, wouldn't happen, would it? No, it just, there was nothing I could do. Um, just could not make it stick whenever I tried it. And whenever I, it, it, there was some serious defending going on, but clean. But that was what I was expecting at this race because, you know, the high dra um, the long straights, the draft, it's such a flowing track that you're always trying to break the momentum of the guy behind you. And the guys mm -hmm. that raced today did an incredible job doing it. I mean, it was clean as far as I could see uh, from the cars that were around me. And a good race all around. It was very, very close indeed. I mean, in the second race, um, you, you got off to a great start. A, little, a great battle there with Kane Lasky. I mean, were you held up by Corey Slay going into the pits? Because we, we just caught the kind of the back end of that. Or was yeah. it a mistake just before that? Was you just, just catching someone at the wrong time, perhaps? Well, the thing was that, okay, um, both both on, uh, Andre Kaido, who had an incredible run in, in race two, um, mm -hmm. I was closing, and I, I closed after the pits. I got out in front of Hugo, which made got me to second place, which is where I needed to be, didn't want another battle. I had the pace at the second stint to catch Andre, because I did it in race one. I caught him and just couldn't get by him. I just wanted a shot at that win, and I closed the gap from 3.3 down to 2.7 in the first the, my outlap. Mm -hmm. and then it kind of stayed about the same. I was getting getting accustomed to the to the car the way it was, and then as we came up uh, on Corey, who was out of pit cycle, mm -hmm. um, we he, he I, 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 obviously he's there to race for position, but he's out of pit cycle. His car is all over the place, and he kind of battled uh, as even though he's already announced he's going to the pits because he has to, and it definitely it, it cost me about a, 1.3 seconds. And I think if that had not happened, I probably could have got up to Andre but not mm -hmm. you know obviously I'm not going to get the win I have to get by but um, you know I mean I can't fault Corey for that I mean he is racing for position but out of pit sequence you know maybe a little bit of slack would have been nice he gave the slack to um, to uh, Andre Cardo and, uh, further before that lap so a little bit unusual yeah. perhaps just a little bit of misunderstanding there yeah but another good, good result for you Keith, because it's so. a second and a fourth he must be pretty pleased with that considering um, I mean well, the Honda's not the strongest at this track it wouldn't, it wouldn't seem despite well, the, the performances that you and yourself and Torbo produced. 
it was um it was a, it was very I was really happy with the qualifying. There's there's no doubt about that. I was blown away with the qualifying for me and Jesper to be fairly up there. And I knew we were going to be chasing uh, the Portugal guys because they put in a lot of effort. I know they did because I've sp- I've spoken with Francisco and they're working hard uh, to to produce in this league and uh, it's really appreciated the hard work they put in. But um, in race one, I mean, it was just it was clean battling. It was tight. I just wish I could have made that pass stick on Andre. I wish I was so. <laughs> did you did you happen to catch it? Oh, absolutely, we saw every single attempt. <laughs> oh, man, and you know what it was? If I had just I set my brake bias up to the front a little more than usual. If I had had it down in a little more to the rear, I could have trail baked into the corner, and I would have mm-hmm. made would have held onto it. Just wasn't thinking. So, uh, but a good good two results nonetheless. I mean, uh, I couldn't be more happy. And we move on to uh, Mr. Francisco Villa. Uh, Francisco, um, a good couple of races for you there. Really, you got, you got a win here last year, but a second place and uh, um, a, a rescued sixth, you could say, in the, in, the, in the second race. I mean, what happened to you in the second race? Because you just disappeared back through the field at one point. Yeah, I can say it was a, it was a bad result. Uh, I wasn't expecting to be to be second, to be honest, because uh, I don't think this is a BMW track. So I was I was quite happy with the result in the first race. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the second race, uh, I knew I could have a good start. I, I had a good start, and I was chasing uh, Hugo and Andre. So I, at the time, uh, I thought I had a shot at win. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, when I when I break uh, to the to the start of the last sector, to that right hander uh, going downhill, mm-hmm. I braked so hard that the pedals got loose. I, I lost the wheel. I lost <coughs> the pedals. I had to grab everything. Oh, I see. Yeah, explains it. I thought I thought I should press escape, escape at the time, but uh, I, I waited for the for the next straight, uh, and I was able to put uh, everything more or less together, and mm-hmm. uh, try to to in some places to the end. Oh, that's a shame because it cost you big time because you were back in the field. And how did it feel yeah. to be back battling in the middle of that group? Because there's five cars all right around you. I mean, including your teammate Miguel and, and Kane here as well, yeah, and Keith exactly. and Tolborg. It was. It's pretty it difficult, did, especially when you've got loose pedals and wheels. <laughs> exactly. So I, I couldn't risk anything. So I, I just tried to chase them and uh, see if they, they made any, any mistakes. And uh, as, um, as they have a, a, better, a better outing out, out of the first corner, I, I can't chase them in the straight. So it's impossible to pass in here for me. Well, excellent result, uh, Francesco. Thank and you very second much. And second and sixth. It was a good recovery considering your, your difficulties for that sixth position. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Francisco, one question for you. Um, were, were any of the other guys, um, Andre or, or Miguel, willing to just answer a couple of questions? Or... Uh, let me just check, okay? Yeah, because they had great races today, man. Great, and we'd love to talk to them, just even for okay. a few words. That's someone I'd like to talk to, and that's Mr. Kane Lasky. Miguel is mm-hmm. here already. So, Hi, uh, Alex. Yep. Hello, ahead, Kane. Kevin. Hello. Yeah, so uh, congratulations for uh, for a couple of decent results. A um, couple of incidents in race one, uh, especially with Vincent Khan, and uh, obviously you're affiliated with him. So uh, how do you think that went? Yeah, basically the only real mark on, I think, my whole two events. Um, eh, it went that I hit him in the back, so that's my fault. And um, basically crossed over at the last second he was defending and he went to move over and I had a good race set up and I you know I had set my car up for going down the inside of the fast uh bowl turn and also that downhill right hander and so I went to do the crossover and just didn't get it hit him and then I tried to wait for him but basically he looked like he had some trouble in that uh uphill left hander and he got spun around into the wall and so yeah, bad bad result for Vincent. He's on my team, and I, I felt bad. Um, he had a good run going. But still, you must uh, you must be happy with the overall results that you got today. And uh, yeah, so. I was disappointed last weekend. I had a really good race pace for Road America, and um, I basically didn't have internet and um, had a bunch of things. I got disconnected. Didn't get any practice, so I qualified bad and ended up in the gravel trap in the first turn and didn't end up really showing my pace. And um, Today I also had, I felt like, double podium pace, and um, I, I had to move my rig to get internet, and um, I forgot my chair. And I got here also mm-hmm. late after work, and so I had a different chair that was moving back with pillows, and I didn't get very many quali laps in and <laughs> moved my quali again. And it's, in this league, it's very important. 
<laughs> I, and I'm I the top that. few rows. Yeah, so uh, in the end, you know, I fought all the way up behind Vinny. I felt bad. I really, this league, for two points, you really shouldn't take a chance of doing anything, and that's my whole strategy, and I uh, felt bad for doing that. And other than that, you know, race two, I had a great battle with everybody, and um, yeah, basically couldn't get Keith at the end and ended up with a podium and I think a fifth and uh, a great result. Also, Matias had a, a two good runs today, and so we're moving up in the order. You are indeed, so uh, congratulations, Kane, and obviously your uh, incident will be looked at, but uh, we'll see how that one goes. Obviously, no one's going to make any predictions for that. And someone else I'd like to talk to is Miguel Nato, who uh, obviously had a race win, an excellent result, and uh, a not so good a result uh, for you, Miguel. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the in the quality, uh, um, I'm very happy with um, with my lap. For me, it's a perfect lap. Um, in the se- in the first race, uh, I start very well, and I try to um, to open a gap to to Francisco, and yeah, I'm lucky to um, to the fight to Francisco with uh, with Beric or Jasper. I don't uh, I don't know, and um, and I open um, a gap. And um, and uh, so so the the result of the first race was um, was more than uh, than than good. <laughs> it was a uh, well, yeah. perfect race for you almost. Yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, and then race two, you sort of seemed to get uh, get stuck in the pack a little bit and uh, unable to make the make yeah, the, the move sec- stick. Yeah, the second race was um, was was a mess for me because um, in the first uh, <laughs> second lap uh, you. I was in the in the confusion of the of the of the field, and um, and when the, the the things are start to to going well, um, I touch with uh, with Jasper. He, he exits the pits and I pass in the in the straight, and I, I don't know whether what happened. I don't see the replay, uh, and <laughs> so so the races are. You still a race win uh, obviously uh, holds you in good stead uh, for later on in the season, and uh, we'll obviously we'll look forward to uh, to seeing you at the next round. So uh, thank you, thank you guys for joining us. Yeah, yeah. thank you, thank, thank you, Miguel, you. for um for, for that, and uh, congratulations on the on the wonderful pole position as well, by the way, and the wonderful race one win. And um, we'll just get a quick word with um, Mr. Klein. We don't often get to hear from you, Mr. Klein. Um, <laughs> um, how was how was your race? It was from your perspective back in the back in the field. Uh, actually, I, I don't know why I'm interviewed now because I didn't finish <laughs> on the podium. No, we just like to talk to you, Matthias. You know, but, just, but I have to say, it was, a, it was a very fun race with uh, Eric Nelson, Reggie, Dory in the first race. Uh, it was much better than expected. I didn't expect anything on this track. I struggled a lot. Uh, the whole week, but Kane helped me with the setup, mm-hmm. so uh, went quite quite nice. And then actually in the second race, I don't know what happened, but uh, all of a sudden I was battling with uh, Willa and NATO, and <laughs> I don't get to, to <laughs> fight with them often. So, <laughs> so you, you, your race was enjoyable, though, of course. It was it was great, and I think I, I just I just uh, tried to stay stay clean and. and it and, and not have uh, any crashes or bumps or whatever, and I think it paid off. And, and what, how do you rate how how do you rate your chances at Nurburgring? You got two ninth places there last year. Um, you think you can you can repeat that or maybe even do better? I don't know. I hope for for top ten again. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. In the rain, so it will be, will in be the rain, uh, yes. interesting. How do you fancy ch- uh, chances in the rain? In the German rain? Yeah. It's always raining on the double green. (laughs) 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 Well, thank you, Matthias, uh, for uh, Matthias, sorry for joining us, and um, good luck in the next event, and hopefully we'll see we'll see more of you. Thanks, good fun. Thank you. Cheers, um, Matthias. Before we uh, before we leave and sum up the race with uh, Mr. Davis, a a quick word from Keith. Yeah, just organizer. um, (laughs) Yeah, and I I just wanted to just throw throw this out there. I mean, I'm obviously I'm I can only see so much of what's going on, but um, it seems to be a habit of me being the organizer to watch the the map to see what's going on on the track and i gotta say I'm, i was really impressed i mean we had a, a less than par um event at road america with uh, incidents and you know we we reviewed three and a half hours of incidents to basically make a point that we're not going to put up with with um 
ill driving out on the track, uh, over aggressiveness, uh, extreme defending that, that does bend the rules or breaks the rules. And I think everyone got the point because it to me it looked like it was it was um, a stellar race today from everybody. It did look a lot better. We had one incident at, in perhaps race two. Um, of course, we've got Khan and Lasky as well, but I'm sure that that would dealt with Paul, Paul, Paul Vinny. Um, he can't get the break at the moment. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, your championship carries on a, a, a pace. Well, and, I mean, um, you're yeah, probably yeah. going to be very close at the top of the championship now, maybe even second place, because I mean, Tolbrook only got a couple of average results there, really, for you know, for, for his standards, of course. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. In the long run, this, we're still only at round two, uh, yes. race four of sixteen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I definitely won't count my eggs, but um, I'm just. As, as the organizer, uh, it, to me, it, it seemed like this event went much smoother. I didn't see people complaining. Um, you know, I, I, I obviously we were still in post race, but um, I just want to say uh, well done to all the drivers uh, for keeping cool heads out there. It seemed it seemed to me. I mean, obviously this is just after a race, but it seemed that everyone did what they were expected to do out there. Obviously, an incident here and there is, is just part of touring car racing. You can't get away from it. I mean, watch WTCC <laughs> or BTCC for that matter. <laughs> BTCC is uh, notorious for it. I mean, you got a, you got a fourth and a fifth last year at, at Nurburgring. Yes. Um, confident of improving on that because it's needed I, to be improved on that to, to keep up in this company, isn't it? That's oh, the problem. This, this is the, I you can't take like, fourth and fifth nowadays. No, it's it's you need you need podiums nonstop, but you also need race wins. And Andre Caedo, well done to him. I mean, if you look back at season two where he pre qualified and his his results from last season, he's definitely definitely a driver to watch because he is he's coming. It's like a a flower that's blossoming in spring. <laughs> <laughs> very poetic, Keith. It is. It's very poor, but <laughs> he, he very, very well done on him. I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to see the transition of drivers from season to season and how they've progressed. And you know what? It, it, I, I can only say it comes from hard work. He didn't just wake up one day and then all of a sudden have oh, absolutely. half a second or a second of pace. He worked at it, and I know those guys work really hard. Yeah, I, I remember Kyle, you know, a couple of years ago. He is nowhere near this speed, and he has worked his ass off to get to this, the speed he's at right now. And uh, his, work, his, his hard work's paid off. He's got his first TPS win. And I'm sure he's going to get many more. Definitely. Well, I just, well, uh, th- I just want to say thanks, guys, for, for commentating. I'm, I'm looking no forward problem. to watching the broadcast back and uh, to, you know, for staying up so late. You guys do a great job. So thanks again, guys. We don't be playing football manager no anyway, problem. so it's fine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so Kate, a quick... Kate will probably face Pam a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks. I'll let you close out. No Thank you, Keith. So, Toby, just... Um... I mean, some of that event up for us. We saw a, a debut win for uh, for Andre Cardo. We saw a dominant win from Miguel Nato, and uh, plenty of action in between. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a dull moment, really. No, I, Nato obviously showed why he's excellent, and he also showed why he's fragile. Where he needs, yeah, where he needs to improve, and uh, he obviously needs to improve when he's racing in traffic. And uh, obviously, his one lap pace is excellent. Excellent. He showed that in qualifying, and uh, he says it's a perfect lap. He was the only one. To dip under the 52s, and that's the only time I've seen anyone dip under the 52s, quite frankly. He, he so, it, was a, it was a perfect lap, and it, it really was. Yeah. It was a superb lap. Absolutely nailed it, and uh, we were commentating, commentating on his uh, on his on his lines and uh, clipping apexes, and it just was spot on. Reminded me of uh, Talborg actually at Bathurst last season, and uh, very similar lap to that. So he, he nailed that, then nailed first the first race almost from the first lap. And uh, and then sort of fell away in race two. So whether he we, 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 saw, we saw the two sides to him, didn't we? We saw the two sides of NATO. We saw the you know the the extraordinary speed that he has and the ability to dominate a race. And then we saw the the fragile other side of Miguel, who got himself he gets himself involved in incidents, whether of, of his own making or not. He just seems to get involved in them. And I mean, do you see him? Do you see him as a champion? You see? Do you think he can become a champion? You know, can he iron out those? Those, those, you know, it's, it's only a small margin, isn't it? Whether he can mount the title challenges remains to be seen. He definitely needs to work on his his racing in the pack, as I was saying. But uh, he he needs to he needs to take this victory and he needs to he needs to look at the victory and look at why he won, and then he needs to look at why he didn't didn't do so well in race two. He's still it's still in the top eight, so uh, nothing. Yeah, it was it wasn't a, a terrible result. No, was... but you need to be top fours almost every race yeah, if you want to absolutely. mount a consistent title mm-hmm. challenge. If you have a bad race, you have to be in the top five, I think. You know, you, that's that's the, the the key part of that. I mean, Tolbach had two bad races here today and still kept in the top five in both races. So, I mean, he just kept himself in, in the hunt. Um, I don't think he will be championship leader now. I think the VR will just about overtake him as championship leader, but it's going to be very close. 
they even tight at the top of the table because I think that Keith has gained them both. I'm just going to say, I think Keith, so, will, Keith will be up there, won't he? Absolutely, Keith has gained them both. He's already very close, so we're looking forward to those points standards being updated. You'll be able to see them at touringproseries.com. Just click on the ATCC um, logo in the next couple of hours and uh, click on the ATCC logo and you'll see the, um, the standings um, just under the, st- the standings tab, amazingly enough, and uh, you'll be able to follow it all from there. So um, thank you to Toby Davis for... Um, Joining me today, and thank you to uh, all the viewers, those all at Race Department, um, those at touringproseries.com, and uh, thanks again to Race Department, of course, for the form that they host for us, free of charge. It's uh, much appreciated as we continue to develop and uh, improve the spectacle of uh, Touring Pro Series. So thanks once again, once again to you, Toby. No problem, Ryan. It's been a, a joy, as usual, to commentate on the, on such a popular and enjoyable championship to watch. And uh, thank you to everyone for watching. We'll see you in two weeks' time where we go to the Nürburgring GP. Just before that, on the same week, on the Wednesday before the Friday, uh, we go to the World Touring Masters penultimate round at Potrero de los Buenos. And uh, Mr. Toby Davis will be in action there as the championship leader. So we wish him well for that. And thank you to everyone for watching. We'll catch you in two weeks' time. <laughs>